shut up I'm more Y'all share, share. Share, share if you really care. Share if you're a millionaire. Shut up about more shit. It's shit about me, my mama, my rope. Oh shit, the baby, my rope. Oh shit. It's shit about my rope. It should have been my mama, my mama, my rose should die. I'm sorry, I can't get too. I can't get too radical because I'm at the airport. But I'm radical, y'all know how I roll. Good morning. I know it's early in the morning, but I just had to get on here and talk with a few of y'all. I just want to um, thank everybody for praying. How you doing, Kevin Bishop? That's my brother, Kevin Bishop. The great man of God. Look like my spiritual son on here. Prophet Jamel. Prophet Jamel. One of the greatest prophets in Virginia area. Amen. Him and my daughter. Cameron, Prophetess Karen Owens. How y'all doing out there today? Good morning. Good morning. No, I ain't in Kentucky. I, I'm glad y'all... I, I thank God for everybody prayers that pray for me. Um, what happened was I was in Kentucky. And when I was in Kentucky, they missed my... The, they they um, delayed my flight because of some technical difficulties. How you doing, Elva? My daughter, Elva. Some te technical difficulties <clears throat> with the plane. So I had to stay over out here in Charlotte. Out here in Charlotte. And, you know, overnight. But they gave me a nice hotel. They hooked me up with the four four points by Sheraton and they're giving me a complimentary breakfast okay this is the second time that happened to me when I was in Kentucky I, I had to stay last time and something took place now what they have to do with what I'm talking about prophetic prayer see everything you do is prophetic even when things happen in the natural this is what's going on in the spirit realm too so I'm praying over the city of Kentucky because there's a spirit of delay that happened this is not the first time that's happened it got nothing to do with the people of Kentucky it's just over that region every time I fly in the spirit of delay happens I get delayed in my flight or they change the flight or something take place with some type of delay situation. Um, but I thank God for um, letting me be sensitive to the prophetic realm. How you doing, grandson? Blessings to you. Look like uh, my, my grandson, Edwin, he helped me out today. Him and my son, Apostle Blair, was there that weekend. I thank God for them traveling out. They drove 10 hours, y'all, to come and assist me. And, I, and I, I bless people who are hungry. I bless people who take that, you know, had that zeal to come and help out, you know, um, so I, I appreciate them for that, but I want to talk about prof a prophetic prayer, um, when you pray, people, it's not so much about you get what you want when you pray, but understand the signs of what God is saying, even when your prayers don't get answered, you know, I told everybody to pray that I won't be, you know, that I make my flight, etc. But you know, God had a different plan because when I was in my hotel room, you know, God put something on me. If I would have never got delayed, He would have never told me about delays. So I asked God, I said, God, give me 
the understanding of what you're saying through this. And what God was showing me, even if you pray that a certain thing be the will for your life, that doesn't mean that I'm not answering. Amen. That just means I'm speaking in the midst of your waiting period. See, the waiting period, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I just came out of a three day, you know, I just came out of a meeting, a conference. So God had allowed me to wait before I got home. Because, you know, once I got home, I'm going to chill with my wife. I'm going to the movies. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He like, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So there's, there might be a fight. I have to fight in, in, in the spiritual realm when I get back. I don't know. But what God is saying is, he's saying prophetically when you pray, even if you see something in the natural that's going on, those who wait shall renew your strength. So it's not so much that it's a delay or a denial. It's just a waiting process. Amen. It's a waiting process. And, you know, I'm a man of faith. I'm, I'm a man of faith. I believe when I pray, things move, things happen, and they do happen. Uh, um, 70 to 80 percent of the time when I pray it happens in either in seconds minutes hours or days amen and many can attest to that but I'm not here to boast and brag on my 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 great faith but I'm boasting on my patience to wait on the Lord my patience to hear and see what's going on in the spiritual realm my patience to to define the prophetic sign in everything that's going on in my life. Amen. And God wants you to do the same thing. There's a waiting period. Most people, you waiting to get to the end promise. Guess what? Once you get your promise, now you got a new thing to wait for. You have a new you have a new goal now. You have a new challenge. A, a new thing to believe God for. So learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn to find prophetic signs in everything that's going on around you. Don't be trying to rush to the promise so quickly. You know, even though the children of Israel waited an additional 40 years in the wilderness, um, which could have took them a shorter time, they learned many things in the wilderness. Amen? So this is, this is the thing. You want to learn God. You want to learn and experience God. And learn how to really sit with him even in the midst of the storm. You know, the he three Hebrew boys, they said, very, said something very powerful to a wicked king who was trying to enforce his rule on them by making them bow down to the golden calf or the golden statue. I'm sorry, not golden calf, the golden statue or deity that he had created. Um, and they said something very powerful. They said, guess what? Even if our God don't deliver us, we still not going to bow down to your golden image, nor worship your God. So we have to learn, people of God, even if a God don't rescue you in a time frame that you want, you got to have a prophetic prayer like the Hebrew boys. Lord, even if you don't rescue me, even if you don't allow my plane to come that same day, I still won't bow down to Baal. I still won't bow down to this golden image. I still not. And the bowing down is the fear. What the enemy wanted them to do was bow down in fear. Fear of another God or another deity. So don't let fear. Don't bow down to fear. Don't bow down. Don't bow down to the fear of the enemy. Amen. I'm still going to serve. Exactly, uh, Kevin Bishop. Exactly, man of God. I'm still not gonna. I'm still not gonna bow down. You're not gonna have me worrying and tripping. I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna get home to my wife. So even when, even though I missed my flight last night, I'm still going home this morning. I'm still not gonna bow down to fear. I'm still not gonna bow down to delay. I'm still not gonna bow down to denial. Let me tell you something. When you are a prophet or a prophetic person or apostolic person, any fivefold leader or any sheep of God. One thing you have to learn is I got to the point to where even if God do not come through, I'm still not going to accept no for an answer. 
There are many people in scriptures, no matter how many times Jesus told him told them no, they refuse to accept no for an answer. So even if God deny me, even if it's not in his will, Jesus told a woman, guess what? My will or my job is to go do the work of him who sent me. And my job is to, and my, my obligation is to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She was a woman without covenant. She was a heathen. But guess what? That heathen had relentless faith. Even if you tell me, no, God, I refuse to accept no. Even if I'm Hezekiah and I only got one day to live, I'm going to turn to the wall and remind you of what I've done for you. I'm going to remind you of what I've done in your kingdom. And I refuse to be told no. That's prophetic prayer. That's prayer of relentless faith. Prophetic prayer don't mean that you're waiting on the future to come. The prophetic prayer is when you take your future and bring it into your right now and you act it out. You act out what God wants you to do. Even if God told you, no, I refuse. I refuse to accept this. I don't care. I will be vindicated for everything that I ever lost in life. I will reap my harvest. You will reap your harvest. So don't let the enemy make you bow down to fear. Don't let the enemy make you bow down to the realm of time. Some of you waiting on to get married or some of you waiting on children or some of you waiting on to get your house or your ministry and you've been delayed the last 20 years or 15 years or whatever. You don't accept that foolishness. You don't bow down to the realm of time. God will allow you to redeem the time. You're not getting too old. Guess what? You know, Moses started, Moses was climbing mountains at 80s. What, what is your excuse? An 80 old man climbing mountains. Sarah was knocking them dead. Knock, drop dead gorgeous at 90. She had men trying to kidnap her. <laughs> Don't accept no for an answer. No time is not on your side, so guess what? You redeem the time. You speak prophetically to your destiny. So even though my plane was delayed, so to speak, my prayer wasn't. Even though my plane was delayed, my prayer wasn't. So guess what? I still got compensated. I'm still in a in a uh, four to five star um, hotel. My breakfast is paid for. I had to come out money out of my pocket, and I get a fresh start this morning. So do not, I do, I do not bow down to Baal. Let this be your prophetic prayer point. When you pray. Don't only pray that God will be done, but even pray that what you're believing for, your heart's desires, be done. I don't think y'all caught that. Don't only ask God to let his will be done, but ask him to let the hearts of your desire, your will, to be done. And you go take it by force, by fire, because you are the G-O-D of your destiny. You know, God gave me the acronym for what the big G-O-D stands for. He's the general destiny. But he's called you to speak into your destiny prophetically. You make declaration and you call forth your harvest. You call forth what you believe in God for. You don't sit up there and just accept things coming to you in life. You take it by force. You take it by fire. So even when it don't go your way, you refuse to be told no. That is prophetic prayer. Because prophets don't only tell you your future. They don't only just tell you words of knowledge of your present situation or your, or, or, your or, or, or your past situation. But they also declare and decree what they want to see happen. They take what's in the unseen realm and bring it into the seen realm. This is a prophetic prayer. So I pray that on today that you become the prophet of your life. You ain't got to wait for me. You ain't got to wait for no other prophet from 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 Zamunda somewhere. You ain't got to wait till your favorite prophet on TV come to pro proclaim over your life. You have a prophet in you. Jesus in you, the hope of glory. He's hoping that you catch that you got glory. Jesus in you, the hope of glory. He's hoping that you catch that you have glory. Let the prophet in you speak to your destiny on this morning. Let the prophet in you speak 
into the unseen realm. You speak your reality. You speak to your reality. Don't let no man, the greatest prophet you'll ever get a word from is within yourself. Within yourself. I remember my, when I had a, a situation with my spiritual covering, my previous spiritual covering. And he would never prophesy to me. He would never teach me prophetic secrets. He would never give me no information. He was just only taking my money, taking my money. And I believe in giving to prophets of God. I believe I so big. I so big. I'm the biggest soul that I know. And I sold thousands and thousands of dollars to my men of God. Thank you, man. Well, oh, if I'm under you or are you my prophetic leader, I so big. <laughs> me and my wife are big soul. That's the reason why we reap big. However, at the same time, when that leader wasn't get, being a great father to me, one thing I learned how to do was be the prophet of my own destiny. I spoke into my existence. I spoke myself on television. I spoke myself into riches. I spoke myself into doors. I spoke myself into these things. He didn't have a word for me, but guess what? God had a word for me. And God said, you will be the greatest prophet that you'll ever encounter besides Jesus. So prophetically speaking, let the prophet in you. Well, and I believe in spiritual fathers. I believe in spiritual leadership. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm a spiritual father to many people myself. But I will never replace the prophet that's within them. I will never repl replace the prophet within my spiritual children. Because the only thing I'm going to do is confirm what the prophet in them is telling them already. All I'm going to do is confirm what the prophet in them has already told them. You take it by force. You take it by fire. You don't let nothing. You don't. You don't accept it now. That's why I always push my spiritual children. What God is telling you: fast, pray, do this, do that. Because I don't want them to codepend on me. What is God telling you? I might need a word from you. I might need a word from my spiritual children. So you need to be in tune in the spiritual. You can hear God just as much as I hear God. What is God saying to the church? What is the Spirit saying to the church? So today, you prophesy to your destiny. You prophesy to your destiny. You speak prophetic declarations on your on your life great is he that's in me that's he that's in the world do you know who you have inside you you have the prophet among all prophets the major prophet the major apostle of all apostles he's the real chief apostle the chief cornerstone let him come forth ask him to bring forth your destiny he has put the ball in your court. Prophesy, son of man. Prophesy to these bones. He told Ezekiel, son of man. You know Ezekiel was called son of man just like Jesus was called son of man? Don't you know you are the son of man? Don't you know that you can you can go from being a son of man to a son of God? Once you begin to prophesy, he says, son of man, you prophesy to these bones. Ezekiel had the same authority Jesus had to prophesy the things, to speak the things. Just like Jesus can curse the fig tree, Ezekiel had the power to talk to the bones so they can live. Go on and say, I'm a prophesy. He says, Son of man, you prophesy. Oh, I'm waiting on the unction of the Spirit. I'm waiting on the unction of God. No, Son of man, you prophesy. You speak to these bones that they shall live. All of us still waiting on God, God waiting on us. That's prophetic prayer. But most prophets won't tell you that because they want you to codepend on them for your destiny. They want you to codepend on them for your prophetic word. They want you to codepend on them for access to the heavenly realms. That devil is a liar. You have God. You have God in you. And again, I believe in human accountability. I believe in serving your man of God. I believe in blessing your mother and your father in the faith. But they will never replace God. They will never replace God. Ever. Son of man, you prophesied to these bones. 
Stop waiting on an unction to function. The gift is within you. Once the Holy Spirit gave you the gift, remember it's a gift. He don't take it back and you don't need his permission to open the gift. Because if I give you a gift, you don't need my permission to open it. You don't need my permission to use it. Just use it. Prophesy. Prophecy is not word of knowledge. That's words of knowledge. I call out your name. I tell you a specific thing going on in your life. That's a form of the prophetic. But that's word of knowledge. That's not prophecy. I can tell you what's going to happen in the future. That's prophetic. That's prophecy. But the highest form of prophecy is when you can make a prophetic declaration and it manifests. That's revealed or manifested revelation. Through declaration. That is true prophetic prayer. Where you can get your future to manifest in the now. That's the highest form of prophecy. But nobody will tell you that. Everybody, I want a word. I want a word. Speak your word that you want. I need a word, prophet. What God's saying? Prophesy to your bones, son of man. You the Ezekiel of your day. Prophesy to your situation. Speak to your destiny. So, again, we got to learn to speak. So, again, I'm not discrediting prophets. I'm a prophet myself. I believe that we need prophets. We need prophets to judge prophecy. I believe that we need prophets to see things that we don't see. I believe that we need prophets to speak things into the atmosphere and things begin to shift. But I also believe that the body of Christ is coming to a point of time that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall all prophesy. You sons and daughters of God, prophesy. 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 Speak to your situation. Prophesy. You have the prophetic in you. Prophesy. If you feel with the Holy Ghost, you pray in tongues, that's prophecy concealed. Once it's, once it's interpreted, it's prophecy revealed. So keep prophesying. Pray in tongues until you get the interpretation. Pray in tongues until the interpretation manifests. And speak prophetic declarations over your life. That's why none of these prophets, these false prophets, be trying to sit up here and... And, 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 and because they think you, you don't know or you ain't as sharp as them or whatever, that you can't speak to your own destiny. My destiny is going to manifest no matter who's speaking to my life. I'll prophesy more to myself than any of these major prophets ever prophesied to me. They can see it, but they can't manifest it. They can see it, but it never comes to pass. One thing about, I can, I can really say I thank God for giving me that grace. And the SMI family said, well, when we prophesied, things start moving. When we prophesied, things start activating. When we prophesied, the ball get in motion. It's not just we see it. Psychics can see it, but they can't change it. Psychics can see it, but they cannot manifest it. So you don't just need somebody that can see something. You need somebody that can speak and things start moving. Prophecy in motion. Prophecy and activation. Prophecy manifested. So this morning, prophesy, son of man. Prophesy to your own situation. Don't wait on a prophet. I'm all for prophets. Our next one-on-one -on -one with the prophets is October. Make sure you come out. It's in Houston, Texas. We're going to also have one in Virginia in November. And we'll also have another one in December. So, October, November, December, one-on-one -on -one with the prophets. One in Houston, one in Virginia in November, and back to Houston in December. You need to be there. But until then, 
you prophesy to your own situation. You speak to your dry bones and you tell them to live. You command them to come. You command your future and bring it into your right now. Don't wait on no prophet. Don't wait on no apostle. Don't even wait on your pastor. Don't wait on nobody. The flyers on the wall for the October meeting were set by. Prophesy to your situation. Prophesy to your situation. You command your blessings to come. I ain't waiting on no blessings. I don't wait on my blessings. I prophetically take it. You don't need no word. You become the word. Manifest the word. The word became flesh and it dwelt among us. You speak to your you speak to your situation. You become the word. Don't wait on no word. You speak it. Don't wait on no word. What you need to wait on a word for? This is prophetic prayer with Prophet Morris. Prophet Sean Morris. Confirming word for me? Exactly. Because the prophet in you know what I'm talking about. It's the truth. When somebody says, oh, this confirmation? Because the fact is the prophet in you already spoke to you. All I'm doing is confirming what the prophet in you already spoke. So again, I'm all for prophets. I'm all for uh, uh, respecting major because we need it. We need prophets. Even apostles need prophets. Now I'm not gonna get into that teaching, but you can be an apostle and be blind as a bat because you don't got a prophet in your life. And if you're an apostle, nine times out of 10, if you're an apostle, and you're trying to play the role of a prophet, your eyes are dim to a certain degree. Everybody need a prophet. But until then, you prophesy to your own self. Amen? So again, I may have missed my flight, but I ain't missed my destiny. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I may have missed my flight, but I ain't missed my destiny, sweetie. That's one thing about it. You can't stop. You can't stop me. I got Jesus. You can't stop me. No devil in hell can stop me. So even in the midst of troubles, trials, delays, or what seems to be denial, refuse to be told no. Even if a situation is dead, refuse to be told no. Those bones were dead. They had been dead for a while. But God told Ezekiel, you prophesied to them bones. So even if your situation seems dead, even if it seems like God is nowhere in it, even if it seems lifeless, even if it seems like this everything is gone to rust, you command newness of life. You command newness of life. That is prophetic prayer, people. Oh, I just thought that was regular prayer. No, that's prophetic prayer. Declares and decree is it. declares and decrees what kings do. Kings make prophetic declarations. So the king in you is telling you to decree a thing, and it shall be established. That's the highest form of prophecy. That's kingdom. That's kingdom. The prophetic is kingdom. Remember, the kings had prophets with them. <clears throat> but you have a king in you and you have a prophet in you you have a king in you you have a prophet in you so I just wanted to wake y'all up this morning with that prayer with that declaration I love y'all I'm going I'm heading home to my wife heading into the ace town Remember, October, I believe 13th through 15th, we're going to have one-on-one -on -one with the prophets in Houston, Texas. You need to be there. Virginia, we're coming. November 17th through the 19th, one-on-one -on -one with the prophets. You need to be there. Well, it's going to be a prophetic glory gathering. The Virginia outpouring, prophetic glory gathering. Y'all need to be there in Virginia. 